In the previous videos on chips, feeds, and speeds, we discussed certain particularities of cutting tools. And we paid a lot of attention to the cutting surface and its angle. A neutral, positive, or negative. And that cutting surface was the surface on which the chip was formed and on which the chip slides. Those videos also talked about tool nose radiuses and why they're important. Today, I want to talk about cutting lips and the importance of their angular positioning. If we look at this cutting tool, well, we won't see very much because it's very small. So let's use this mock-up of a cutting tool instead. So this cutting tool has two ends, one 60 degree point that would be used for thread cutting and we talked about that ad nauseam in the thread cutting uh, video. And the other point is a 80 degree point general purpose turning tool. Three things are important on this tool. The first are the uh, clearances on the front and the side surfaces and those clearances permit the cutting lips to penetrate the work surface. If there was no clearances here, this tool couldn't penetrate the work. The second important thing is the cutting surface, the surface on which the chip is formed. And remember that we've seen that this surface can be neutral, positive, or negative. And that that angle, neutral, positive, or negative, affects how tightly the chip is spun. A very positive angle opens up the curl on the chip. A negative angle tightens it and makes for a very tightly curled chip. The third important part on this end of the tool, well, is the cutting lips. And those cutting lips are formed by the intersection of the cutting surface and the sides of the tool. Those cutting lips have to be very sharp. And that's about all we've said up to now. But in reality, the angle of the cutting lip, how it's angled to the part, is quite important. Another thing we mustn't forget is the tool nose radius. And it plays an important role in the angular positioning of those cutting lips. So let's head over to the whiteboard and take a look at some of the theory behind the angular positioning of these cutting lips. So I have three examples here. In the first example, I have what I call a positive cutting angle on my cutting lip. And I can see the cutting lip here, and that is what I refer to as a positive cutting lip angle. In the second example, I have a neutral cutting lip angle. And we can see the cutting lip here, and that is what I will refer to as a neutral cutting lip angle. And in the third example down here, well, we have what I would call a negative cutting lip positioning. So we can see that the cutting lip is negative as far as cutting action goes. And it's actually even going to undercut that shoulder. It's very important here to note that all three examples are being performed by tools that have a neutral tool surface, the surface on which the chip is being formed. Because if we have a negative or positive surface, well that will alter the size and shape of the chip. So to keep everything equal, we're going to suppose that we're always using a neutral for these examples. It's also good to note that on the lathe, when we're turning, the actual length of the chip that's being formed on the inside of the cutting action or at the diameter of the finished part and the length of the chip that's being formed on the outside diameter of the original part aren't the same. The chip is quite longer here than it is at the start and that accentuates the curling of the chip. But as a general rule we can say that a positive angle on our cutting lip will draw the chip away from the part. So we have our curled chip that's moving away from the cut surface. A neutral cutting lip angle 
will fold the chip back on itself. So it will actually bring the chip back on itself and that could be problematic. And a negative cutting angle or a negative angle on the cutting lip will draw or push the chip into the surface that we've just cut. And you can see that the chip will be going towards that freshly cut surface. And that really isn't a good thing because it's going to scratch mar and mark that surface that we want to look good. This is the best situation. The one that requires the least amount of force and the one that produces the best finish. So this is what we're shooting for if we want to take a lot of material off quickly. This situation is sometimes acceptable and I will mostly use something with a neutral cutting lip angle on very small diameter parts that are prone to flexing because the cutting force on this part is mostly axial whereas the cutting force on this first example is axial and radial so for small flexible parts this could be an advantage and this third example well it's only good for finishing and it's something that we want to avoid we don't want to undercut our shoulders and this actually will pull on our parts slightly so not a good thing plus it's the finish issue on that diameter that is also a big problem so we want to avoid this situation we could end it there but there's a little more to it and that's why I produced this for sketch because we do have a problem some of you may have noticed that if we're to avoid this situation well we won't be doing what I told you to do when we turned the threaded end on the hammer handle because we turned that 9.8 millimeter diameter by using an 80 degree tool that had 5 degrees clearance on each side and that is on its cutting lip a negative attack angle since we were taking small cuts well our tool nose radius comes to save the day and we have to take that tool nose radius into account here and if we look at our fourth example what well, we can see if we magnify the contact between the tool and the part and we'll figure that this was the 9.8 diameter that we were turning on the hammer handle and I bring that up to here we can see that even if the cutting lip is at a negative angle in this example of 5 degrees well thanks to our tool nose radius the point of contact on a very light cut or a finishing cut between the tool and the part is still a positive angle and will draw the chip away even if the main cutting lip is positioned negatively. When surfacing it's no different. Positive, neutral, negative. A chip that curls away from the surface, a chip that curls onto itself, and a chip that curls into the surface. I also get a lot of questions concerning the height adjustment of a tool on external turning operations and for internal turning operations. So let's head back to the whiteboard and take a look at that in a little more detail. So now let's take a look at how the cutting lip height affects the cutting action. And in our examples here we have three heights and we're looking at our tool from the side and this is the cutting lip that we see right here. So let's start with exterior turning. We want, whenever possible, to have the tool on center. And I said in other videos that we want it on center or just a little below. So let's take a look at why. In one here, we have the cutting lip on the center of rotation of the part and that is the best possible way to have it. And in three here we have it just lightly below. Now this is the best on center cutting action. And as we go a little lower the main difference is that we increase the front clearance of the part and the cutting surface starts to act more and more like a negative angled cutting surface. 
and that is the main difference. So for the easiest cut possible, on center would be best. And as we go down, we're becoming more negative. So that increases the cutting pressure. Now, I've always said on center or a little lower, not because a little lower is better, but because a little lower is better than a little higher. And since we want to make certain that we're not above center, well, we'll tolerate being a little lower. Because above center, in this example number two here, is never acceptable on an outside or exterior diameter. That is because the face of the tool, once you get above center, is going to start to rub on the outside of the part. And the cutting lip will not be able to engage into the part properly. So above center, absolutely never acceptable. On center, the best. Below center, acceptable. When we're turning interior diameters for boring bars and that type of operation, well, it's reversed. On center is still the best situation, but this time above center would be acceptable. And below center is absolutely not acceptable. Actually, the main difference other than the fact that it's reversed between an exterior and an interior diameter is that everything in the interior diameter happens a lot quicker. If the tool is above zero, it's face angle becomes negative very quick because it's hugging that interior diameter. And the same on the low side, a tool that is too low, which is totally unacceptable, but on an interior diameter, comes in conflict with the interior diameter a lot quicker. So we have to be a little more careful with our tool height when we're working on an interior diameter than when we're working on an exterior diameter. A quick way to evaluate if you have the proper height on your tool is to observe the end of your part after you've surfaced it. So oftentimes when you're setting your height, a small surfacing cut will help you to evaluate if your height is correct. And you look at it this way. If you have no bump on the end and your surface finish is nice right to the center, well your tool is at the proper height. If the bump on the end of the part after a surfacing operation has square edges, while well, your tool is a little too low, and you know that you just have to adjust it a little bit in height, go up just a bit, and you'll be okay. However, if the bump on the end is rounded out, well, that means that your tool is too high. Now, when I'm setting a tool, and I'm using this method, I want to purposely start a little low and see this square bump and then adjust upwards to get my proper height because this situation is not good at all. It's very hard on the tool. This is rounded out because of all the rubbing on the face of the tool. So avoid this. Start purposely a little low and adjust upwards to get that proper height. And we're going to end it here for today. And as always, have fun. Be safe and happy machining.